Man, some of you guys have been wondering, you know, Ross, what do I do now that it's the winter time or we're getting our frost. People tend to freak out every year at this time of the season. They're like, Ross, Ross, we just got our frost. What do I do? Do I bring them in? Do I protect them from the frost? In fact, one of, uh, one of our clients who I saw the other day um, has been doing this for a number of years, actually growing figs for a number of years. Uh, he's also my chiropractor, and he was asking me some questions. Well, at least he told me is really what, how this came up. He told me he brought his, his trees in for the winter, and I was like, no, 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 don't do that. Not a good idea, because what we want to do is let them get hit by a frost. In fact, we want them to get hit by a couple frosts, this frost that you see up here on these trees is pretty minimal. This is a real light frost. And uh, those leaves will start to die and the tree will get the signal like, hey, you know, it's, it's time for winter now. This whole entire time I've been stupid and growing uh, all throughout the summer. We didn't really lignify that great and I didn't really get the signal that dormancy was coming and I just kept growing. And typically that's because we just have too much water in our soil here, guys. But that's how the trees react. And then finally, when they get hit by this zap, this light zap, it doesn't hurt. It just sends that signal. Now they know. And now that they know, they're getting their act together. They're, they're on their way to sending their sap now, their carbohydrates that's in the branches and this carbohydrates, that sap flow, will then go down through the branches to the trunk, all the way down into the roots, and will be stored there uh, all winter time until in the spring when these trees then decide to wake up. And when they wake up, it is a huge biological advantage. You know, trees go dormant for a reason um, and should go dormant for a reason. You know, not every tree has the ability to go dormant, but the trees that do get a huge biological advantage come spring. When they wake up, they put out that huge flush of growth. And in the fig tree's case, that's a really big benefit. By getting all that growth and strong growth early in the spring, uh, we're able to get a lot of growth early to then set a lot of fruits early in the season We'll have a much larger harvest this way. A lot of people, you know, like I said, they tend to bring their trees in before the frost. The trees are not really dormant. They sit inside all this time, or let's say they put them away in storage before they're really truly dormant. And then they are not really totally asleep. And they kind of uh, wake up very easily. And then what ends up happening, I get the same questions from pretty much the same people in January, February, March, uh, when your trees shouldn't be waking up, they should still be asleep, or at least it depends on where you guys live. But typically I get this question a lot in January and February. And if you're in a colder place like I am and the spring isn't until May, you got a lot of months before you could put your tree outside and it's away from any danger of frost. Because if your tree wakes up and it's growing and you have it inside and it's in darkness, there is no sunlight. Yeah, maybe you got it in a window. Maybe you got some supplemental lighting on it. It's just not the same, guys. The biological advantage of having them outside, they wake up outside, they put out all this nice growth, they're immediately in that full sun and in that strong sun that's not diffused by a window, or that's not fake from a light bulb, you just can't beat it. You just can't. And uh, in a lot of cases, people who bring their trees inside ruin their entire season that way. So the decision that you're making right now has a huge impact on your tree success for the entire next year. <laughs> so take my advice. Uh, don't worry about the cold. The only time that you should be concerned about the cold 
is when temperatures start to dip below 15 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have a potted fig tree, the roots can, not will, they can start to take damage at below 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So in that situation, you don't wanna kill any roots. The tops should be fine at 15. You prune your trees. You listen to me all, this, all these years, hopefully, you guys. You should have lignified wood by this point. We stopped our water, right? We told you guys that we wanna stop the water as soon as we see that fruit set, because as soon as we see the fruit set, we're gonna have better tasting fruits by lowering that water. We're gonna have a higher bricks, higher sugar content, because some of that water gets directed right into the fruits. Then, actually, as our fruits are ripening in August and September, we're gonna dial back the water even further, as I said, this summer and this September. And the reason for that is because we need to stop our trees from growing. We need to get them lignified. The tree will do this themselves, but if you as the grower are constantly giving the tree water, that's the on or off switch of growth. So if you swip, switch the flip on and say, grow, 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 way in August and in, uh, in September, by the time you get to November and even December, your trees are just not gonna be very well lignified. So the only real way to do this is to really stop the water sometime in August Maybe even July, it depends on your frost. Is your frost in November? Is your frost in October? Is your frost in December? You wanna have these trees well lignified um, for just the health of the tree. That's really the only purpose. Being able to withstand these colds that are gonna come in, being able to withstand 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when you're, you know, it's now and you're, you're worrying all the time about, will my tree survive the winter? Will my tree do this? Should I bring it inside? Should I do this? Well, I'm not gonna worry about it because my trees are in the right state they should be. Um, so I'm not even gonna be concerned now with moving my potted trees uh, until I see a temperature of 15 degrees Fahrenheit, which typically is either around Thanksgiving at the end of this month, or it could even go all the way into December. Um, we could even, I could even have these trees out here until sometime around Christmas, which is kind of insane for the Philadelphia area. Now, it depends on where you guys live. So that's why I'm giving you that 15 degree Fahrenheit temperature rather than a date. So that's the big deal. Then, uh, you know, even 15 degrees Fahrenheit is enough, isn't enough to kill the, 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 the tops of the trees. I only mentioned, by the way, the 15 degree low for the roots of the trees. So the same thing applies to the in-ground trees is that if you have roots that are exposed or if you have roots that we plant our trees, as I mentioned to you guys many, many times, plant your trees higher above grade, actually at a one or two foot high mound, create the mound before you plant the tree. Take the extra time, go the extra mile, you will be rewarded. But the thing is, because the root ball is now above grade, it is a little bit more subjected to colder temperatures in the soil. Typically, you're not gonna really have to worry about that in a lot of zone sevens or higher. But it is a good idea that if you're following that advice, cover the soil with some sort of insulation and insulation can be of many forms, right? Not just home insulation or tarp or something, but what about wood chips or straw or leaves or anything? Even, even extra soil can be an insulative material for the roots uh, of our trees. So all these new plantings here of these fig trees that I just put in a month ago, even a couple weeks ago, I'm gonna come in here, especially to these young ones, especially to these more sensitive ones that are not very well established, I'm gonna cover that soil. And I may even cover a little bit of the base of the tree, the bottom couple inches of the trunk with some sort of material. As long as it's not straw, straw can potentially kill the bark. It may be too wet that winter 
the straw can create an anaerobic environment. Uh, you definitely want smaller materials, leaves. You can have as many leaves on your trees as you want. Wood chips is a little iffy as well, but typically you'll be fine. Depends on where you guys live. Depends on the weather that winter. Depends on so many factors. But you do want to cover the base. You do want to cover the soil with something. Uh, the bigger the pieces of wood chips, the better off you'll be. So then that covers the roots, right? That covers the winter protection for the roots. What about the tops of the trees? Well, the tops depends on the variety as well. Everybody has a different variety. Everybody has a different level of lignification. Let's say I have a very hardy variety like hardy Chicago, but if my hardy Chicago isn't well lignified, well then maybe it only survives about 10 degrees Fahrenheit or maybe only five degrees Fahrenheit. But if it's really well lignified, it'll survive zero. Maybe even potentially a little bit below zero degrees Fahrenheit. It also depends on the duration of that low, of that very cold temperature. Typically the average fig variety will be just fine at 15 degrees Fahrenheit. At 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you start to really a lot of, uh, I would say maybe the average variety can handle that, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the average. So 50% of the varieties will handle about a 10 degree low without any damage. A much significantly less amount of varieties, maybe you're looking at 20%, 25% of the varieties that exist. You could get away with five degrees Fahrenheit maybe less than that probably less than that actually more more like it more like 10 or 15 percent of the varieties i think that's probably more accurate so 10 10 10 degrees fahrenheit's really your cutoff to really start to worry i think um so if you have a tree the forecast is coming up you've already seen 15 you're starting now to see 10 degrees fahrenheit it's a really good idea to protect your in-ground tree so, and it, it depends on where you guys live as well. So if I'm in a, a zone seven, but a very warm zone seven, and 10 degrees is really my average winter low, or not my average, it's my lowest winter low typically. Because if you're in a zone uh, seven A like myself, that's zero to, ne to five degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. If you're in a 7B, that's five to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're in a very warm 7B, I would suggest you probably don't have to worry at all because even if you see 10 degrees Fahrenheit, I would say more likely than not, you're gonna be okay. And if you're not okay, it's gonna be so minimal that you don't have to do anything. So pretty much everybody in a warm 7A, 10 degrees Fahrenheit or above, doesn't really have to be concerned with the top of our trees dying. So if you're in a, like I said, you see 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you have potted trees, then you might have to worry. Um, and I would probably get them, and even if I was in a warm 7A and I had all these potted trees, I probably would come up with some system where I didn't have to move them. I'd stack all the potted trees right here on the patio or something and cover them with, with leaves and straw and then throw a tarp over top or something and just call it a day and not even worry about the potted trees. I wouldn't even move them. And then in the spring, I'd unveil them and prop them back up on their straight up in the air. And that would be the best scenario possible for me, uh, for anybody, I think. So there it is, there's the top situation. So if you have, like I said, you're in that, warm 7b or higher you're good now if you're in a place like myself you're in a place uh that's colder than myself highly advised when you start to see 10 degrees fahrenheit upcoming in the forecast even if it's in the 10 day forecast or the seven day forecast you want to get ahead of the game here and what you're going to want to do is either wrap the trees or cover them in some way. So one thing I'm gonna be doing this year is I'm gonna be bending my branches down.
let me show you what I mean here. Pull the stake out of the ground. I'm gonna basically be taking this whole branch, slowly bending this. You don't wanna break it. They are very pliable, so I would not be concerned too much. But I'm gonna get this as low as I can to the ground, and then I'm gonna stake it to the ground so that it stays very low, and then I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna cover it bare minimum here with a tarp, because I'm in a 7A. I can just cover them with a tarp. If I was in a, um, a six or a five, highly recommend that when you bend them, you cover them with straw, with leaves, with wood chips, then throw the tarp on top. And uh, that should be enough winter protection. As long as you get the tree close to the ground, it's a great heat source in the winter. So the, the ground is constantly radiating that heat upwards. The tarps and the leaves and things trap that heat, keep it insulated there, and the tree will have absolutely no issue when you unveil them. The other option is a lot of people, what they do is they'll wrap them. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of that actually. Again, same thing. I see 10 degrees in the forecast. I'm gonna wrap all my trees. Some of them on the west side of the house, that's what we're gonna do. Another option, you can bend them and you can get yourself a, uh, a wire system and just wrap them around the wire. And that way you can keep them staked or keep them low that way. And you don't necessarily need to really keep them super low to the ground. You can also tie um, bricks and heavy rocks to the branches to keep them low. Um, I'm gonna use garden staples and see how that works out. But I may put a wire system in and keep them low that way. I haven't decided exactly just yet. Um, the other option, which we've done for many years, is to cut them back. Cut them back to a certain height of your choosing and then cover them. Or for me, I cut them back to six to 12 inches. This also has a lot of benefits to it in terms of uh, rejuvenation pruning, keeping your tree very healthy and having a lot of wood to then sell or trade or give away to people. When we cut them back, we then do the same thing. We just cover them with a tarp and uh, everything's A-OK, -okay, just as if we had bent the branches down. Same, same process. Other people dig them up and then move them. They dig them up, they put them in a large hole in the ground, a fig coffin. A lot of people have crazy ideas. Um, that to me is just not worth the time or the effort, but uh, you know, people are crazy about their figs. Now, um, all of this, in terms of wrapping these trees and bending the trees down, will probably not occur here until at least sometime in December, maybe even January. We, not, we may not see that 10 degree low until that point. And of that time I will do this. Now, and until that time, I'm not gonna worry at all, by the way. Now, unveiling these trees is critical because we don't wanna wait too long either. Usually in around March here in this climate, we're not gonna really see anything below 10. We're not gonna really see much around 15 either. So we wanna unveil them, we want to plop them right back up. We want to take the wrappings off. If we're wrapping them with tarps and different things, we want to take the mulch off. We want to do whatever it is just so that these coverings on the trees, it's not too warm outside in March, in April, in May, close to our actual spring so that these trees then start to mold. Um, the branches start to die in other ways. So yes, this wrapping and all this can help with uh, you know, the wintertime cold, but as soon as it starts to get warm actually, this wrapping is a very bad thing. You wanna take that off um, because nature will start to decide that we're gonna kill it now. The temperatures are warm, the microbes are now going to be active and starting to actively destroy 
these branches, mold them, break them down into compost eventually, um, even though the tree is living. But because the tree is dormant, the tree doesn't have those natural defenses against all of those microbes. So you want to make sure that you are unveiling them at the right time. And if you do all that, you're good. There's nothing else really to worry about. Uh, there's really nothing to worry about in general. Worst case scenario, you don't even cover your trees. They'll always come back from the roots. They'll always come back from below the soil. I very, 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 very rarely have killed an in-ground tree that was on its own roots here in my, my climate. They always come back from the roots, even super, super young and small trees. Typically, they always come back. Um, by the way, the really small and young trees, you don't have to dig them up. Just leave them there. You know, um, it's actually very easy to protect them because they're so young and small. There is no horrible thing that's going to happen. You have a young tree. Look at this. This is a young air layer I just put in the ground two weeks ago. The roots are so insignificant. Same thing with this tree here. But guess what? The tree is so small. All I have to do is throw some leaves and straw on top of it and then throw a pot right on top of it, a container. And then on top of the container, I put a stone on it so that the, uh, the container doesn't blow away. And that's my form of winter protection. It works every single time. What I wouldn't do is plant a grafted tree in the ground, <laughs> especially right now, and try to get that grafted tree through the winter time. Maybe if you plant it in the spring, you might have some success. That is something I have done, is killed a number of grafted trees this past winter. I was really pushing it, and I really like to push it. That's how I know all this stuff. That's how I know that the trees will go to 10 or 15 or five or zero and at what state and what they look like because I experimented, because I did the deed. I did the duty that not many other people have or were willing to. So now I have the idea of what I need to do. I'm passing the knowledge on to you guys. Listen to what I have to say. You will not fail, I promise. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button. This uh, video is worth a lot of money. A lot of people's time um, can be saved. A lot of headaches, a lot of worrying. So I would highly suggest, please, if you got something out of this, hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, uh, figboss.com. We have all kinds of information just like this um, on the blog that we keep you guys updated on. Um, I even have on there a... Um, a fig tree timeline, it's called. So at any time of the year, you know exactly kind of what you need to do. And you can follow along with that. And that way, you'll never really be lost at any time of the year. Um, also, I would consider because, again, this, this video has saved, I think, a lot of people time and money. This was only 23, 24 minutes of your life to get this information. Uh, highly suggest just supporting me on Patreon. It would really help. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I do appreciate all the support, guys. I want to thank everybody for watching once again, and we'll see you for the next one. Take care, everybody.